There's nothing to worry about. Just fine. I'm your number one fan. He just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Listen, asshole! No, you listen, you little bitch. You hang up on me again, I'll cut you like a fish. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? What an excellent day for an exorcism. I am Dracula. I am a child. I am the eater of wolves and of children. gentlemen didn't know if i was going to make a nights of horror radio today this week actually didn't know we had a a lot of stuff going on with the channel midsummer scream content just finished up now we're starting our zoe takeover on the channel right now you can go check out the newest episode of the miles Heart podcast with christina owner uh creator of zoe reborn and uh, we got a surprise video coming out tomorrow. If you guys watch the end of the podcast, you know what that surprise video is going to be. But we have a surprise video coming out tomorrow. And then a new strange and unusual podcast coming out tomorrow as well. I'm sorry, Friday. Uh, and, of course, this episode of Nights of Horror Radio will be uh, also out on YouTube uh, sometime this weekend or this earlier uh, later this week. Uh, so yeah, got a lot of things. Also want to give a big shout out to our partners over at Dubby. Go ahead, check out some Dubby Energy, bro. I gotta, I gotta find my tub. It's around here somewhere though. Get some Dubby Energy going again for, uh, just streams, videos, haunt season. It's going to be a, a busy haunt season this year. And, uh, we are very much looking forward to that. Can't wait. It's going to be fun. Speaking of haunt season, man. HHN's coming out with all the stops this year. We have the official lineup for Halloween Horror Nights out in Hollywood now. Uh, so you'll start seeing more content uh, leading up to Halloween Horror Nights week, which we will probably be doing pretty soon. Uh, maybe we'll try to get it knocked out next Monday uh, and then release it the following week. Um, but, yeah, a lot of stuff to be announced, including the recent announcements today of the weekend Um after Nightmares Trilogy or the Nightmares Trilogy. I don't even know what it's called. Um, and, of course, the Tear Tram. Welcome to Blumhouse or something something to do with Blumhouse. I know that much. Um, so, yeah, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, stuff to talk about today. We're going to talk all Halloween Horror Nights today. All right, let's talk some HHN. A lot of stuff has been announced since Midsummer Scream, so let's uh, let's check it out. And let's, uh, let's see what they have to offer for this season. So as we can see, to begin with right here, we have a uh, brand new scare zone for this season, Murder of the Crows. Now, the Crows are no stranger to Halloween Horror Nights. The Crows are actually some of my favorite things right now at Halloween Horror Nights that they've been doing them. And they are giving them their own scare zone now, and they're going to let them just run a wild. I cannot wait to see what this consists of, how many stilt walkers we're going to get there. Maybe we'll have some people that are not on stilt walkers uh, running around as crows and stuff. So I'm excited to see what this has to bring. The crows, I think, in my opinion, are always a fun time and always deliver on some of the best moments that we've ever captured on camera. So there's that. Um, Chainsaw Punks. Now, Chainsaw Punks is, uh, I think, the one that I'm most hyped for. Uh, I'm a big fan of punk rock, so I cannot wait to see what they pull off with Chainsaw Punks. Um, I think this is a great concept to have that, that punk look, you know, go with these, uh, the chainsaws. I think it, it goes hand in hand and to play the punk rock in the background. I mean, punk rock will go perfect with this vibe. So I cannot wait to see what songs they play. I know Murdy is a big punk rock fan. So to hear maybe some, some old school punk and stuff, that could be a lot of fun. Uh, I know that's a little bit easier said than done because a lot of punk is very, uh, on edge of what they talk about, uh, everywhere. They like to piss everyone off. They are uh, trying to fight the system. So we'll see what happens. But I'm excited for Chainsaw Punks. This one should be a lot of fun. It says, get revved up 
for your night of terror as soon as you enter the gates of Halloween Horror Nights. Chainsaw-wielding punk rockers with masks and mohawks will close in on you. Tickets are now on sale. Yeah, Chainsaw Punks should be a fun one at that. And then our final scare zone, Skull Lords. Now, this is another hyped one for me. This sounds amazing. I love the concept of this. All hail the royal court of the undead where gothic kings and queens reign. But beware, cross into their spectral kingdom at your own prevail. All who challenge their rule must meet a dead end. So that sounds promising. That sounds fun. Sounds very medieval, especially like a gothic medieval. That's really in right now. I can't wait to see what they pull off. Rob, you're absolutely right. We need a baby crow. I, I 100% agree with that. We love our Stiltwalker crows, but it's time to bring in some of the baby crows for the Stiltwalkers to protect. Um, yeah, I, I, I think these scare zones this year are going to be a fun time. I mean, there's not, honestly, with Horror Nights this year, there's not one scare zone that I'm not looking forward to. It's going to be really hard to rank all the scare zones because now we have, of course, Skull Lords, we have Chainsaw Punks, we have Murder of the Crows, and we have Luchadoras monsteros that is also going to be a fun thing they talked a little bit about that at halloween horror nights i cannot wait to check this one out especially me being a wrestling fan uh santo shout out santo i i'm thinking about doing a video pretty soon of like breaking down santo so people kind of understand the lore behind what the inspiration was for this uh john murdy did talk about uh, a lot of the Santo films back in like the 70s, 80s when they came out. And basically Santo was this big uh, Lucha Libre wrestler down in Mexico. And uh, he was a huge star and everything. Everyone knew who he was and everything. And he would fight knockoff versions of the Universal Monsters, such as like Frankenstein, Wolfman, The Mummy, um, all these like knockoff versions of them wearing like masks and costumes and stuff. Murdy is essentially doing that at the end of Monstros. And I cannot wait to see what that looks like. All the scare zones this year, I, I'm super hyped for. I think that's a good, it, it's a great lineup of scare zones this year, and I cannot wait to see uh, what they have to offer. Now, it was announced, I believe, yesterday that um, the Purge Dangerous Waters, or yesterday or Monday, the Purge Dangerous Waters is returning in another stunt show. Super, super excited for that. I mean, I dug the show last year. Uh, something new, something creative. Number one, Luchadors. Number two, Luchadors. Number three, Luchadors. Number four, Luchadors. Rob is definitely excited for some Luchadors, uh, especially me and Rob being wrestling fans. Like, I think you and I are going to be doing the chants and everything, uh, you know, get the tables, all that fun stuff. Yeah, we're, we're very much looking forward to the Luchadors. But, yeah, Purge Dangerous Waters is returning. It, I, so I don't know the entire concept. Obviously, they're promis it's promising to be a fiery stunt spectacular that puts you into the world of the Purge like you've never seen it before. Don't know if they're going to do a brand new story for this or if they are going to bring back the uh, story they did last year. Um, I, I'm kind of hoping they do a brand new story. That could be a lot of fun. Um, but I, regardless, just to see a stunt show in the, um, the Waterworld area and, you know, it's not Jabberwockies. I'm fine with that. I can't wait for it, and uh, I am going to definitely check it out again. Purge Dangerous Waters going to be the entertainment show this season. Now, uh, what was just announced today, obviously the Weekend Nightmare Trilogy. Now, if you guys were on social media today, I know a lot of people, just about every story that I saw uh, is excited for this maze, praising this maze, uh, can't wait for this maze. Well, everyone except me. <laughs> um, I, if you guys saw on the stories today on Nights of Horror, we put the frowny face emoji. More or less, that was me. I can't speak for the entire group. They're probably looking forward to it, but that was more or less me. Here is the thing for me in the weekend. Um, I get it. I understand that he's made music videos that are basically horror, little short horror films. He is a big horror fan, and that, that's, that's awesome. When I listen to the music, I do not get that vibe, nor do I feel that vibe. If anything, I, I feel like I want to do the Carlton more than anything going through the maze instead of getting scared. Now, I know I, I heard everyone last year. Trust me. I heard everyone last year. You got to watch the music videos. You got to do that. But I'm like, okay. That's cool. I've watched the music videos. They're very well produced. Uh, and it, it takes you on this interesting journey 
the weekend set out to make with this album. But if I can't hear, if, if, if I'm listening to this music and then going through this maze, I, I'm going to be like, I don't know. It just, for me, it doesn't fit. I don't think that his music is scary and I don't feel that it fits. Now, mind you, I went through the maze in 2020, I think, I think it was 22, 20, 22, 21, 22, I think it was. Uh, and it was a great maze. Very well put together. Set design looked really cool. The uh, makeup, masks, prosthetics, the, 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 everything looked really cool. Um, and, yeah. But the, on the long list of things that, I don't know, on the long list of things that could be considered more horror in the genre of music, I don't see it with The weekend. I don't. Uh, honestly, 22 was my first year going to HHN, and my only year I went to HHN, and that maze was probably my favorite next to La Llorona. That's cool. I mean, I'm not saying you guys, you know, I mean, I just feel like, listen, I'm the, I'm the odd man out when it comes to this maze. I am. I'm not denying that it wasn't a good maze because it was a good maze. It was. Didn't really care for the music being the same five songs in line, especially when you're waiting three hours, and then I got to go in said maze and listen to the same five songs again. That was kind of an issue for me. I, I hope that this year they have more of a catalog of his music rather than just five, six songs that you're going to hear for four hours continuously. Um, especially, and, and, and the reason why I'm saying like four, three hour lines, cause that's exactly how long these lines were when he came in 22. I don't doubt it's going to be the same thing this year. Opening weekend is already pretty much selling out for all the tickets pretty much. So it's going to be an interesting, uh, run to see how this, how this goes this year. Uh, here's the thing. I'd rather see Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath, and Metallica, but the house they did was really good. So I'd rather have another property, but the weekend has a good track record. I know. And I agree. Like I, I just, I don't know, like reading more on it. It looks like half of this first, the first half of this maze is going to be a, re a repeat. And then the last half is going to be like kind of more brand new stuff. I don't know. I, I just, I don't, I mean, there's no one that can change my mind on this. I've had conversations with this with people. I just feel how I feel. And I feel like because I have this opinion, people look at me and go, oh, your opinion's wrong. You're, I'm like, that's great. You can be excited for this maze. You can love this maze. You can love the person that is this maze. I'm not a fan of his music. I don't really see the hype behind this guy. I, I just, I don't. So, like, that's great. If you're happy for the maze, great. I'm on a different boat. I understand commercially this is probably the best option to go with as far as a general haunt ticket sale point of view because it's going to sell out multiple nights, and that's a given. Um, I just don't, I don't, I don't see it. I, I really don't. Like, I I'm going to go through it and I'll give it its fair chance because like I said, in 22, I was proven wrong and I came out and admitted that I was like, that actually was a solid maze. Would I go through it again? Probably not. Um, one time was enough for me. I think we ended up going through it like three or four times because we knew people working inside of the maze. So I wanted to go support them. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, what really kills it for me, honestly, and this is the biggest issue that I had with the maze. It wasn't even the maze itself. Um, it was more or less the way the line was handled. And, and like I said, if you're going to be playing the same five or six songs in line, and then the line happens to be anywhere from two to four hour wait, and then I got to go inside and still hear those five or six songs. But I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I know I'm, I'm not speaking for everyone because there are people that were in that line just dancing away and having a good time and stuff. For me personally, for someone who doesn't really listen to the music and doesn't really care for the music, like, it gets kind of annoying. And by the time I get into the maze, I just don't want to hear those songs again. 
Like, I ain't going to lie. Before that maze, I did like Blinding Lights. And then that's all I fucking felt like I heard all season. And now I just can't stand that song. Like, I was, I did like one of his songs. And then after that season, I just couldn't listen to that shit no more. Because that's all I fucking heard for, like, those first couple of weekends. So, I don't know. I, I think if you're going to do the line this time expand the catalog that is the weekend this is going based off the nightmare trilogy i don't know what that fucking means i i I don't know if it's a if he has this is like i don't know a trilogy of album it could be i don't know that's how much i don't know um but yeah i i am happily standing the odd man out for this being like the lowest of my hype list when it comes to this maze uh hey babe how's it going uh, I, I just think that, again, I don't see horror or think horror when I, when I look at the weekend. Not you, Aaron. I was talking to my girlfriend. <laughs> um, I really don't. Um, now I had a, I had a conversation with someone about this earlier and, uh, <laughs> I get what you're saying now. Uh, I had a conversation with someone about this earlier, and you know they they brought up the fact that they did Alice Cooper and Black Sabbath and Slash, and they were like, "How does that translate?" They're not fucking. I don't think horror when I think those. I'm like, okay, number one, the two mazes that they did with, uh, yeah, Romulus is gonna be good. We'll talk Romulus a little bit later. Um, the two. Exactly. See, even Hayes is on the same side. She knows what's up. But uh, the two, um, what was I saying? Oh, so anyway, the two mazes that Alice Cooper did in 2011, 2012, in my opinion, and if you've ever been to an Alice Cooper show in concert too, I've always considered a lot of his music to be somewhat horror related. And there's a lot of songs, like Feed My Frankenstein is a perfect example Welcome to my nightmare. Go to hell. There's all these uh, songs that Alice Cooper has that that creepy vibe that fit in horror movies that would fit in a maze. And both of those mazes made sense. The music made sense. The music was creepy. There were moments that were just like, okay, this goes great with a horror-themed maze. Alice Cooper worked for two years. That's why they did it for two years. Black Sabbath comes along. Black Sabbath is another example of a band that works with the music hell black sabbath's name alone is a play yeah exactly schools out was featured in scream exactly so um i mean you know black sabbath is just a play on religion essentially that's mocking religion you know the holy sabbath is something but then when you put black sabbath on it you know that's and of course all their songs you know like all these hard rock songs and stuff they made that maze work and it came out terrific it was great to see exactly to, for them to bring all those songs to life of Black Sabbath was great. And then you got uh, when Slash did his original. When Slash did his original maze, he catered to what was asked of him and what he wanted to do with the maze. He catered his talents towards making an original horror score. And he did that. I agree. Uh, sometimes, depending on what the IP is and if it can be accomplished very well. Uh, For the most part, yes, I do like originals a little bit more because there's more creative freedom there. Um, But there are some IPs that are, like, really cool when they bring them to, like, like Last of Us last year was just phenomenal. Uh, I think that's one of the best mazes that HHN has ever put on, in my opinion. Um, But anyway, back to what I was saying. Uh, Slash, when he did Clowns, um, that was an original maze, and he made an original score that was catered to that maze, that fit the vibe of that maze. Now, there was a couple arguments I got into, a couple conversations I got into today of people saying, oh, well, Slash isn't metal or Slash isn't horror. But I'm like, you're right. When he's with Guns N' Roses or anything, I, I mean, that's not really horror. Yeah, I mean, there's probably ways you can incorporate it to make it horror, much like how they did with The Weeknd, but I don't see that vibe with Guns N' Roses. But when Slash comes out of his comfort zone and does something original, like original music for all the mazes that, match the story and are setting with the story like that's a different ball game because he is now catering and recording to what that story is which is via universal monsters or when he did clowns 
he is making music surrounded and the vibe of that story. So therefore, that music sounds a lot more horror related because, you know, you have those, you know, songs that match those scenes that match that story that that bring that it's like a score essentially i i think what slash is doing more with those mazes is essentially a score instead of actually just like guns and roses coming over and it, it'd be one thing to say like oh yeah guns and roses is doing music for universal monsters but i think slash is coming in and doing more of a score approach with all these monster mazes if you really listen to it everything's instrumental there's a few songs that like when with the song we belong dead of course you hear him say we belong dead but like for the most part it's a score for the maze. It's a dubstep meets Slash's talents as a guitar and stuff. Um, and those are more scores. So that stuff is catered to the story. When you bring up an artist like The Weeknd, I hear the music. It's, it's very club vibe music. I don't feel horror with it. However, that being said, I'm still giving it a fair shot this year. I was proven wrong in 22 um and they 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 probably will prove me wrong again this year in 24. Um I will probably come out either on the vlog the night of when we film that or um on a podcast or whatever and I will come out and be like, "You know what? Yeah. That probably uh that was actually a decently put together maze. I just I'm not a fan of the music. I I don't really like the music. I don't listen to the music." So that's just for me, yeah. Yeah, but see, the collection is a horror film. So, like, that makes sense. I don't know. You know, the comments are a little wild on here, but I'm not the only one that agrees with this. Uh, we have this first comment says, bro, ha he has nothing to do with horror. Boo, not this again. I don't get that guy. Uh, <laughs> that's a little inappropriate. Uh, should have gave us Nightmare on Elm Street, Anniversary House, Rob Zombie, Metallica, Slipknot, Iron Maiden, Alien, Prey, Friday the 13th, Smile, Five Nights at Freddy's, Resident Evil, Outlast, Bioshock, Creature from the Black Room, Nosferatu, Doom, Kill Switch Engage, Ghost, Bring Me the Horizon. Just a certain amount of maze ideas that are beyond better than choosing the weekend. You guys got to stop being trendy, aim for properties that would scare and obliterate people. I'm glad to know that I'm not alone there are the diehard fans that are looking at this and going okay we, we you know there could be other things they could have done and then there's the casual fan that's looking in going oh shit the weekend i like the weekend i'm gonna go see that and yeah dude i love the i love bring me the horizon house yeah that'd be pretty good the fact that ghost was mentioned goofy as fuck i'd take ghost over fucking weekend at least their vibe fits a horror film I can get that from both their music and watching their music videos. For Weekend, I have to watch his music videos in order to understand the horror vibe. I don't get that listening to the music on its own. I'm just saying, Ghost at least is also, I would say, not nearly as big as, them, as him, but is up there in the world of metal. And uh, I think they would, they would have a really good story you can tell. That could be a good original story you can tell with the members of Ghost and whatnot. Um, but yeah, ghost would work. Ghost would be, but ghost would be a good one. I'll keep my opinions to myself. I don't, uh, I like, I don't listen to ghost religiously, you know? So it, it's not something that I'd be like crazy about, but I'd take it over the weekend. At the end of the day, let everyone have their opinions, right? Whether someone is very excited for this maze or not. It doesn't matter. Not everyone has to be on board with the same hype. Not everyone has to like the same exact things when it comes to haunt. There are some people that are going to like other things more than other things. Am I pissed off? Is it the end of the world for me that the weekend's coming to Halloween Horror Nights? No. Because regardless, I'm still going to have fun. I will still find fun and pleasure at the event regardless. And who knows? Maybe this maze will shock me again. So I'm going to give it its fair shot. And uh, I'm going to go in open-minded. Of course, I just personally don't think he relates to horror. I just don't. I, when I hear the music, I don't feel ho I don't get the vibe of horror. But again, I'm going to give it a fair shot. I'm going to give it a fair critique. And who knows? It may blow me away set design-wise. I, I may walk out of that maze liking something. It may not be the music, but it may be something. 
I, I don't doubt in my mind the talent's going to kill it in there like they did in 22. And I don't doubt the set designs are going to look amazing. Uh, I'm just not a fan of the music. So, you know, that's, that's really it. Uh, I respect everyone who is excited for this maze. I'm, I'm very uh, happy for those who are excited for the maze. Um, and for those who are, are not excited for the maze, you know, listen, I'm with you. I'm right there with you. But let's, uh, you know, a lot of people said Ghostbusters in 2019 wasn't going to work. And that ended up being a really fucking good maze. So we'll see. I, I said that 22 wasn't going to be a good maze, and I walked out, had a completely different opinion. Um, so we'll see what's up. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, Horror Nights this year so far, and uh, I can't wait to see what they have. Now, I think the one that kind of got overshadowed today as far as announcements go, uh, enter the Blumhouse Terror Tram Edition. Uh, you know, over there in Orlando, they're getting the Scare Zone Enter the Blumhouse um, so this was really cool. I think I'm super stoked for this Terra Tram this year. This is kind of a newer Terra Tram that we haven't seen with properties of Blumhouse. Um, now we've seen Blumhouse properties in the past, like the Purge take over and whatnot. And, um, nope, you know, I think Blumhouse, no, I think that's just Monkey Paul. But, um, we can make someone want to skip and act happy as fuck. No horror vibes there. I'm going to dress up and chase you with the chainsaw or a knife while having a JBL on Blasting the Weekend. Going to have to skip with one leg. <laughs> Terra Tram, hell yeah. No, this Terra Tram looks fun. You, you, I mean, from the, from the art already, it looks like we got some uh, Black Phone. We got some Megan, uh, Freaky, Happy Death Day. And I think that's the Purge over there, but I'm not too sure. Let me see. Uh, let's see. Face the murderous android Megan, the sinister grabber from the Black Phone, the serial killer from Freaky, and more. So we might get some Purge in there, but Terra Tram looks fun this year. They're already a way build. I've been seeing a bunch of construction on the Terra Tram, and, uh, you know, I'm excited for this year's Terra Tram. I, I think this is going to be something different, unique, spread out more of the properties of Blumhouse, so spread out more areas that can include different people or just have them popping up randomly. I cannot personally wait to just see Megan running around everywhere. That's going to be great. Maybe someone, uh, one, of the, one of the very talented scare actresses or scare actors that play Megan um, can bust up out the dance every now and then. You know, that could be some good footage that I would love to see. If someone can memorize that dance and you're auditioning to play uh, one of the Megans in the Terror Tram. If you guys memorize that dance, that will be the freaking greatest thing ever. That would probably make it the best Terror Tram of all time. Uh, just saying. Uh, but to see the Grabber, to see Freaky, to see Happy Death Day, maybe some Purge, some other Blumhouse properties that are that are probably going to make a little surprise in there. Wouldn't be surprised if they threw a little Five Nights at Freddy uh, Easter egg in there, a little cameo. That'd be really cool. But uh, I'm excited for this Terror Tram. I, I have always loved the Terror Tram, regardless the theme, like... I'm never going to not love a year of the Terra Tram because I just love walking those sets. So it, it's, it's going to be a great time. I'm looking forward to this Terra Tram this year, and I really can't wait to see what they pull off with the Terra Tram. Music doesn't change much for me, to be honest. That was my point. Haha, <laughs> when serial killers kill people in real life, they aren't playing music. Haha. <laughs> uh, in the Purge, that guy did. He had a whole, like, Purge playlist ready to kill for people. I wouldn't be surprised at all if they had them memorize the dance. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. I, I, I mean, that's a big selling point for Megan. So, you know, it makes sense for them to, to memorize the, the dance. I'm stoked, though. I mean, this is going to be a fun Terra Tram. And uh, I know this year, though, so this is the interesting that I read about this year was the Nope section. Uh, Jupiter's Claim is going to be an exclusive just for RIP tour this year with exclusive photo ops and other interactions so if you guys are doing the rip tour this year you'll have an exclusive uh area of jupiter's claim more to yourself so that should be a little bit more scarier a little bit more cool so let's go that's fiction i'm talking about ted bundy and ed gein etc etc your nightmare i thought you just wanted to chase someone with a chainsaw man it's gonna be good halloween horror nights man Terra Tram's looking good um, and all that stuff. Let's talk about uh, some stuff that was announced at Midsummer Scream with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Legacy of Leatherface. Now, this one is looking like this is kind of like one of the top of my hype list right here because of the fact of the concept of celebrating the 50-year legacy that is Leatherface. Um, and, you know, obviously going to see all the adaptations of Leatherface throughout the years from every single movie. 
Um, on top of that, the first, like, two-thirds of the maze is going to be an original take on Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They're going to make an original story uh, that surrounds the different looks and styles of Leatherface and also expands the universe of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Murdy explained this as a multiverse of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre universe, so I'm excited to see that. And then it's going to obviously, obviously finish out with going back to the original film, celebrating 50 years of that original film. Now, I did talk about this, I think, with Rob, and I talked about this with Hayes, uh, and I'm going to talk about it right now on Nights of Horror Radio, but Texas Chainsaw Massacre was originally supposed to be at Six Flags Fright Fest Extreme this year. They were going to do the 2022 one that came out on Netflix, which was terrible. Sorry to say, it was. It was terrible. Um, And then when it came around time for their panel at Midsummer Scream, No mention of it. Just gone. That's completely erased. And I think that's for the sole purpose of HHN doing Texas Chainsaw Massacre this year. Um, I think what Murdy and the team over at Halloween Horror Nights are doing this year with Texas Chainsaw Massacre is brilliant. I can't wait to see this kind of original take on Leatherface. It's such an iconic character. And uh, you're going to see more characters within the Texas Chainsaw Massacre universe uh, from, uh, you know, Chop Top the hitchhiker, the uncle, all that stuff, grandpa, obviously, uh, and some other characters that uh, were sprinkled throughout the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre universe. Uh, I would say about the only good thing about the 2022 movie was the bus scene, and that was it. Um, A couple of the kills were pretty funny, but that bus scene was just great. That was so great. Um, However, the rest of the movie sucked. That being said, uh, I cannot wait to go through this one. They did uh, a great reveal at Midsummer Scream, and we have the entire panel right now on our channel, so go check that out if you guys have not seen the Halloween Horror Nights panel to get an inside look of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Legacy of Leatherface, and um, Luchadores, Monsteros, as well as Universal Monsters Eternal Bloodlines. Uh, Speaking of which, Universal Monsters Eternal Bloodlines, the first uh, multi-female uh, led story, the second female led story uh, in Universal Monsters history. Eternal Bloodlines join Saskia Van Helsing and the Bride of Frankenstein as they face off against Dracula's daughter and her monstrous alliance, featuring music by Slash. This is going to be interesting. The last time we saw the Bride, uh, she was collecting vampire's blood to resurrect. Um, to resurrect the monster. And she did so. Made him inhuman, uh, if you will. Now we got a Van Helsing in the mix. And she's teaming up with the bride to go after this queen vampire, uh, Dracula's daughter. I, I think this sounds promising. You got, a, you got a little war going on right here. And this was kind of like a buildup what they've already been doing this is like almost essentially chapter two for the Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, but you got a little war going on here. The bride's not done, and it looks like she's out for blood, and I think this maze is going to deliver. Um, I know the last two Universal Monster mazes have not been the greatest. I thought the set design for um, the third, the uh, fuck, what was it called? Universal Monsters uh, uh, Legends Collide with Dracula, the Mummy, and the Wolfman. I thought the set designs were great. I thought the story was pretty good, but ultimately there were some walkthroughs where it was kind of a letdown. Not a bad maze. Um, And then in 23 last year with uh, Universal Monsters Unmasked, kind of a disappointment. Um, So I'm hoping this is a comeback for Universal Monsters, and we'll see what's up. All right, my boy, I hope you have a good stream. Got to go do stuff. Let's plan for Romulus soon. Text me. Gotcha. Babe, we got to get a day going for Romulus. Maybe that's Saturday, I think. It can be great. See you later. Good. Have a good one, Aaron. Thanks for stopping by. I'm excited for this, though. I love the bride. She's tattooed on my body. Right below the monster's head. Uh, right below the monster. So, you know. I think that this is going to be a great maze. Introducing a Van Helsing in the mix, that's going to be a lot of fun. And um, I can't wait to see who 
Dracula's daughter is going to bring out for an alliance. Uh, that's going to be the surprise of it all. That should be a lot of fun. Cannot wait to see that. All right. Now, uh, we know uh, Insidious, obviously, coming to Halloween Horror Nights. That's a big one. And I cannot wait to see where they take the next uh, chapter of Insidious. Uh, we know about Monsteros 2 coming back. The Nightmares of Latin America. That's coming back. Looking forward to that. This is probably my most hyped maze because I really loved the first one last year. And I cannot wait to see. Uh, I, I know they're bringing back... Um, El Kukui, who we haven't seen since 2013 or 14, I believe, when Danny Trejo narrated that maze. That was such a good maze in the Parisian courtyard as well. So I'm excited to see them, the return of the El Kukui, and then to see some new, um, some new uh, nightmares of Latin America. Cannot wait. Um, but other than that, I, I think that that that's probably the top of my hype list. We got Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Now, wasn't a huge fan of the movie, but I'm going to give the maze a shot because 2019 Ghostbusters effects were just A1. And I have a feeling I'm going to like this maze more than I like the movie. So I have high hopes for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I'm hoping the effects kill it, and it's just another banger year for Ghostbusters. Cannot wait for that. Uh, Dead, Expo Dead Exposure, Death Valley, a new ta uh, new take on an original maze over in Hollywood Horror Nights, uh, Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando. We're taking our own spin with it with the Death Valley thing. Very much looking forward to this. I love when Halloween Horror Nights pulls out originals. Their originals have been so good in the past. So uh, with Scarecrow and, and, and other original mazes they've done, uh, Monsteros, obviously. The I'm excited for Death Valley or Dead uh, Dead. Dead Exposure Death Valley. I'm excited for it, man. This is going to be a fun one. You know, you're going with that top secret gov government facility. You know, they're experimenting on t trying to make some super soldiers, but it's gone wrong. What's going to happen? How are we going to escape? What are we going to see? This facade looks amazing. I cannot wait to see uh, Dead Exposure at Halloween Horror Nights. And we're going to take it back to our very first announcement, which was A Quiet Place, another film that I very much do enjoy. And I cannot wait to see what they pull off for this maze, how they pull it off. It's going to be a killer maze to see uh, everything they they can to uh, to replicate that experience of A Quiet Place. Uh, I just saw A Quiet Place Day 1 uh, a few months back. Pretty solid movie. Did enjoy it. Um, so I, I love everything to do with A Quiet Place universe. And I cannot wait to see what they pull off with this maze. Are we forgetting anything? I think we covered everything Halloween Horror Nights. So, yeah, it's looking to be a pretty solid year this year. Yeah, I, I, I can't wait to, to check out Halloween Horror Nights. Um, so here's the plan, ladies and gentlemen. This was kind of like going to be a shorter Nights of Horror radio. Uh, I'm going to go and uh, in a few hours... I got a podcast in studio that I'm going to be doing for next week on the channel. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be a fun one. And uh, we're going to go film that after this recording, get that set up and everything. And then um, I want to try early next week, maybe end of this week, I could start filming a few videos, but then early next week, finish them. Uh, I want to try to get some stuff going for Halloween Horror Nights week. That's a tradition that we do here every year on the channel. Uh, and so we're going to start brainstorming the ideas of what we want to do this week uh, that for that week and then maybe release that uh, more or less on the end of August. And then, uh, yeah, see what's up. But with nothing else more, I think Halloween Horror Nights is actually lined up for a pretty solid year this year. Regardless of how I feel about certain maids and everything, it's okay to have different opinions. Don't feel like you're obligated to blend in with the general public if you do not like something that someone else is going to like that's fine you can have that opinion you know i want everyone to feel that like if if you say your opinion and people think it's not if they don't agree with it and then everything don't even trip bro it's your opinion you have every right to it i am personally not a fan of the weekend but who knows maybe this maze might shock me i'm going open-minded with this one uh, you always got to stay positive when it comes to it. You know what I mean? Not everything works, but you never know. Some things shock you, and then they work. Uh, but regardless what I feel, if you're excited for the weekend, Nightmare Trilogy, big thumbs up. Uh, that's a big dub for you guys, and I know that it delivered in 22, so I'm hoping it delivers for you guys again in 24. 
Uh, as of right now, the, the most hype for me, I have to say, is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Legacy of Leatherface, and, of course, Monstros 2, The Nightmares of Latin America, followed by uh, Dead Exposure, Death Valley. Those are my top three that I'm most hyped for right now. We're going to be doing a full-on uh, Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights week coming up really soon, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on those bell notifications to be aware every time we put up a new video. And, of course, follow hi follow us here right here on Twitch where we try to do Nights of Horror Radio just about every single week, live broadcast and whatnot. Um, today is a little bit of a shorter episode in the sense that I wanted to just mostly talk about the full-on slate of Halloween Horror Nights for a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, without further ado or nothing else more, I will see you guys real soon for another episode of Nights of Horror Radio and a lot during this haunt season. Stay spooky.